What's that? There's a tegu right there. Look Where? It's back. It's right on the edge of the grass. You see that? It looks like a rock. Careful. Wow! From high in the sky, the pine scrub forests of southern Florida appear to be calm and quiet. Yet hidden amidst the plants and rugged terrain, reptilian invaders move with stealth amongst the shadows. I am sure you have heard tales about the Burmese python, and how this giant snake has not only become established in the Everglades, but how it has also become a serious threat to local species. However, there is a new threat that has recently crawled into the spotlight. A lizard native to South America that is notoriously famous for being an aggressive predator, the black and white tegu. Today the crew and I are headed out into the southern regions of Homestead, Florida. We will be exploring a forested expanse that runs adjacent to an agricultural zone, where we will try our luck at finding one of these elusive reptiles. So right now we are driving through an agricultural area, which is considered disturbed habitat, right Mario? Yeah. And why is disturbed habitat a good place to look for invasive species? Well, oftentimes in disturbed habitat, you don't have any species that have been established. So non-native species come in and they find kind of an area that's free of predators and other species. Okay. For the Argentinian tegu, it means free food. There are known to be at least two established breeding populations of tegu in this area, and sightings are reported almost weekly. These lizards are incredibly resilient to weather changes and can adapt to nearly any tropical environment, barring a plentiful food source is available. Combined with the fact that during breeding season, females can lay up to 35 eggs in a single nest and that they have very few natural predators, you can see why their numbers have quickly increased and the populations have established a stronghold. Okay, well this looks pretty wild out here and I'll show you guys, check this out. Right across the way here, that is agricultural area. So this is exactly the spot where a lot of farmers have been seeing tegus. You can see on this side is agriculture and on the opposite side is wilderness area. No one knows exactly how many of these lizards are roaming amongst the underbrush, but experts predict numbers to run well into the thousands. And this is definitely way more wildernessy than agriculture, but it's dense. This underbrush is be really hard to spot anything in. I kind of feel like moving along this old trail is probably the best way to go. Check this out. You have spots like this ground is starting to warm up. A spot like that is where one of these lizards could come out and be basking. And that's what we're hoping to find right now is a lizard out basking in the sun, warming up for the day. It's actually chilly out this morning. So I don't know if that's gonna hurt our chances of actually finding one, but I guess we just start hiking and hopefully we get lucky. We broke trail and headed off into the wilderness. Navigating this location was incredibly difficult, which forced us to move slowly as we searched among the tangled plants and rocky terrain. Tegu are masters of disguise, and their black and white skin allows them to perfectly camouflage amidst the shadows, oftentimes making them difficult to find. I'm gonna pretty much say that trudging through that for hours is not gonna get us anywhere. I think we just stick to this road. I think we have just as good a chance of finding something on this. So head let's way. head this direction and Hopefully come across them. All right, let's do it. With hundreds of acres to cover, defaulting to the trail seemed like a smart play. And it wasn't long before we stumbled upon the most wanted lizard in South Florida. What's that? There's a tegu right there. Look Where? It's back. It's just up in the edge, right on the edge of the road. I don't see it. Right there, look at the edge of the road. You see that dark thing looks like a rock? That's a lizard. That's not a rock? Thing? That's a lizard. Here, here, sure? take this camera. Careful. Got it? Got it, got it, got it, got it. Nice. Yes! Oh. Wow! That 
is a tegu. Woo! Ooh, and it is cold. Wow, put your hand out there. Feel how oh, cold the lizard nice is? Nice That's why it didn't bolt. It's actually basking in the sun right now. Now, I can't get complacent because it could explode in power at any point in time. Let me get some of these grass out of its mouth there. There we go. Wow! And sure enough, just like the farmer said, there is the black and white tegu. Look at how big that lizard is. This thing must be, what, almost three feet in length. Now, these guys are omnivores, which means they eat plants and animals. And one of their favorite things to eat are eggs. Look at that mouth right there, right? Now, this can take down all sorts of other little small mammals and lizards, but it's the eggs that we really worry about these lizards going after. Not only alligator eggs, but also endangered American crocodiles. Okay, yeah, you can see the lizard is now really starting to warm up in the sun. He just, geez, look at that. Look at what it just did to my arm, just with one scrape. My arm is shaking. I'm so, I cannot believe we've come across a tegu. We haven't actually even been out here that long, only searching for about 20 minutes. Now, I don't know if that's just luck being in the right place at the right time, or if there are actually that many tegu out here in this environment. But sure enough, just across from an agricultural area, the farmers said they have been seeing tegus, and this is proof right here. Now, can a lizard like that give you a good chomp? Oh my gosh, if my hand got stuck in the mouth of this lizard, it would be a really bad situation. Now they are not venomous. However, their jaws will lock in place. Look at the muscle on the side of these jaws here. Incredibly powerful. Oh, I hear you hissing. I hear you hissing. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Ah, jeez, he is, he is strong. Yep, yeah, I am I'm giving him exactly what he needs today, which is some time in front of the sun. And I can actually feel him getting stronger by the minute. And if you get your hands stuck in the mouth of this lizard, it's not only gonna chomp down, but if it shakes its body, those teeth are curved backwards, similar to the teeth of a spiny tail iguana or something like a Komodo dragon. And those teeth will literally shred your appendages. So if I'm bitten, there's a good chance we will be on our way to the hospital. So Whew. people at home might be wondering like, is this a dangerous situation? Like, do we have to respect the power of this lizard? Because it, it seems to be pretty calm. It does, and even I find myself getting a little complacent. Just a couple seconds ago, you saw that it lashed out with its hind legs and ripped open my arm. These claws, look at the claws on the back foot there. I mean, these are razor sharp, like hooked claws. Now, these lizards are incredibly intelligent, almost problem-solving intelligent. Uh, it's one of the reasons they've become so popular in the pet trade, not to mention they're absolutely gorgeous. Look at that coloration, right? Yeah. Except you can see how large they get, and it's a tough creature to take care of because of the amount of food that it eats. And a lot of times people get them when they're very small, and then they think to themselves, oh, I can't take care of it anymore, it's so big, and they release them out into the wild. Now, I'm guessing that this lizard is one that probably was born in the wild, just given its skinny nature and its demeanor, so. And this is not a pet. This, even this is seems, not a pet. That lizard seems pretty calm right now, but that's just because of the environment that it's in. Yes, that has to do with the fact that it's cool out here this morning and the fact that it's just woken up from brumation. I mean, this is a very skinny lizard. Honestly, this lizard needs some eggs, it needs some meat, it needs some vegetables, it needs, it needs some food, for sure. And I guarantee that today this lizard was waking up, getting ready to go out there and hunt. Now, you look at this animal, you think to yourself, wow, what a gorgeous reptile. And it makes me sad to say that this is one of the few times where I catch an animal and I cannot release it back out into the wild. This is an invasive species. But the good news for this lizard is that we have a research group that's going to take it in and it's now going to become an educational animal to teach people why the tegu doesn't necessarily make a good pet and how they're becoming a problem now here as an invasive species in South Florida. But this was pretty awesome, spending our morning searching around and then getting up close with the black and white tegu. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Whew. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. Wow, he really scratched up my arm. No one knows the exact origin of the tegu invasion. The only thing we know for sure is that the black and white tegu competes with and consumes Florida's native wildlife. The threat is real, and many experts feel as if the problem is getting out of control. If you live in Florida and see one of these lizards in the wild, contact your local Fish and Wildlife Division to report the sighting. These lizards are beautiful animals. However, they simply do not belong in this ecosystem. If you thought the tegu was a dangerous looking lizard, make sure to go back and watch the episode where I was bitten by another one of Florida's reptilian invaders, the Burmese python. 
And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on this season of Breaking Trail.